All right, so we should have out our interactive notebook. Let's make sure that we have our page numbers correctly. We didn't label the page from yesterday. So I need to go back and label those pages. But just to make sure you got everything, because remember, this is 35% of your grade. So you need to make sure that everything that we put in here that is supposed to be completed and the problems that are assigned are completed. Okay, so let's make sure you already have. You should have already put your name here. This is my book. So I'm going to put this. This is my book. Your name should already be there. That's page one. We put intro. Page two is the syllabus. Page three, rules. Page four, math practices. Page five are your math one formulas. And by the end of the year, we'll of course have all of this filled in, okay? Um, page six, goals. And we've already completed this page. So if you don't have this page completed, Please make sure you go back and complete this page because when I do do your notebook check, you won't get 100% credit if the pages are not completed. Questions? Okay. Uh, intro to Unit 1. Okay, intro to Unit 1. That's page 7. Page 8 is the real number system. Real number system. Page nine is real number graphic organizer. Real number graphic organizer. Page 10, notes on expressions. Got expressions. Page 11 is the parts of an expression, algebraic expression foldable, where we put the notes in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Foldable. Yes, you did. You need me to pause right here? Do you not have this title? All right, I'll pause it. Page 12 is order of operations worksheet. We completed that. You should, yeah, you have that somewhere. Just make sure you title it page 12, order of operations worksheet. I abbreviate worksheet by just putting WS at the end. Make sure you finish it. If you're absent, you have to finish it in order to get 100% credit for your notebook, which is 35% of your grade. Yes, ma'am. It's always, guys, do you see how those papers are sticking out right there? Don't do that. When you use a paper or when you um, take something from those folders, make sure you put it back nice and neat. Our folder is the yellow. So go in the yellow folder and um, get the work that you need, babe. Yes. Yes, that's 35% of your grade. The eighth week of the quarter. All right. The fourth, the fourth week, fourth or fifth week. I think in the first quarter, it's the fifth week. All right, um, page 13 is keywords. We pasted this in on yesterday. And page 14 is going to be algebraic expressions. Algebraic expressions. And we're going to put WS at the end for worksheet. And I'll pause to give us a chance to write. Please make sure that you number your pages correctly. Okay, now we're gonna do equations. We're gonna do notes on equations, all right? Q1, page 15, we're going to do solving equations. We're gonna do solving equations important that we hear this okay so I need you to put your thinking cap on you have seen this somewhere in your mathematical career but I want you to focus if you are still struggling with equations here is your opportunity to be a professional at it so I need you to put your thinking caps on okay 
Really be attentive and listen to what I'm saying, okay? What sheet are you looking for, baby? Which one? You found it? Okay, perfect. All right. I'm going to pause. I'm going to wait, wait for him because I, I don't want him to miss anything either. All right, here we go. Let's do it, y'all. First, let's do a definition for equations, okay? So let's write the definition for an equation. Can anybody think of a definition for the word equation? You've seen it before. You've seen some very basic and simple ones, but do we know a definition for it? Okay. Anybody else want to add to that thinking? All right. An equation are expressions that are equal to each other. It's two expressions that are made equal to each other. Okay. Equation. Two expressions that are made equal to each other. Okay. Two expressions that are made equal to each other. That by definition is an equation. So let's look at some examples of what an equation looks like. Okay. Some people are still writing, so I'm going to pause for the calls. Some examples of what an equation is going to look like. Let's do an example. Let's do a very basic and simple one. You might have 3 plus x is equal to seven, okay? This is considered to be an expression. It's an algebraic expression. And even though you have one lonely number sitting over here by itself, they consider that to be an expression as well, numerical, okay? So you have two expressions that are made equal to each other. Yes, sir. Write them on a piece of paper because your notebook you turn in, you hand turn that in. All right, another kind, we might have a two-step equation. 2x minus 6 is equal to 42, okay? We might have a, a longer equation. We might have, um, let's do three parentheses, x plus 7 minus 5 is equal to 32, longer. These are all equations, and we can have even... Let me do one that has more of an expression on the other side. Um, we could do 18 plus X is equal to 10 parentheses X minus 5. Okay? These are all examples of equations. Some are small, one-step, two-step, multi-step equations. What do they all have in common? There are two expressions that are made equal to each other. And, of course, you don't always have to use X. I probably should have used different variables. X is just the one that is so popular to use, but you can use A, B, C, D, elemental P, okay? You don't have to use X. Any questions so far? So now let's write some basic steps on how to solve. Is every problem going to be solved the same? No, every problem is not going to be solved the same. I'm just going to give you a generic basic way to solve multi-step equations, but you're not going to do them all the exact same way. Questions about what Ms. Reyes is saying? You okay? Hmm? Yes. We're gonna, I'm going to give you a generic, basic way to solve equations, but you're not always going to use the same steps for every single equation because the numbers are different. Okay, so let's do some steps, please. Steps for solving equations.
Step number one. If there's distributive property in that problem, let's take care of that first. So let's do distributive property. Yes, babe. He said, zoom in, right? Step two, combine like terms on each side of that equal sign separately first. See what you can combine on each side of the equal sign separately before you start moving things, okay? Combine like terms on each side of the equal sign separately. Before you start moving stuff, see if you can combine like terms before you start moving things around. Step three, move the variables to the same side. If you have variables on different sides of the equal sign, in order to solve for that variable, all the variables need to be on the same side. They need to be together, okay? So you're going to move the variables to the same side. Move the variables to the same side. How do you move the variables to the same side, Ms. Reyes? By using inverse operations, okay? What does that mean? If you want to move a negative 5x to the other side, you add 5x to move it. If you want to move a positive 2p to the other side, then you subtract 2p to move it, okay? So you use order of operations to move, to move those variables to the same side. Your last step is to isolate that variable now, okay? It's to isolate the variable. Okay, how, Ms. Reyes, do you isolate the variable? By using inverse operations. When you get to the point where you're isolate, when you're ready to isolate the variable, that means all your variables are combined, okay? Then you're going to get rid of terms that can be add, that you can add or subtract to remove first. So adding or subtracting will come first. Lastly will be multiplication and, and division. So first, add or subtract to move numbers. Try that first, and then multiply or divide to move numbers. And I'm going to pause to give us a chance to to write, and then we're going to do we're going to do a couple of examples.
let's do some examples. Okay, I don't have enough space at the bottom to really start an example and actually complete it. So I'm going to continue page 15 on this on my next page. Okay, so this is continue. If you have enough space, then you can use that space. I just I don't have enough space. Okay, so this is uh, still page 15, page 15, continue. All right, so let's try this one. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to jump right into it. That's, where it is. That's what you're going to do. We have a negative 20 is equal to negative 4x minus 6x, okay? I'm going to solve this equation. Ms. Reyes, how do you know it's an equation? Because I have two expressions that are made equal to each other. Okay. What am I trying to find, Ms. Reyes? I'm trying to find the value of X. Any questions about my logic before I start using steps to find the value of X? All right. If you are a person that cannot process and listen while writing, then you need to stop writing and listen. Okay. Just, I'll give you time to copy at the end, okay? But if it helps you to write while I'm talking, as long as you're actually taking in the information, then keep writing, okay? You have to know yourself as a learner. All right, so our very first step is distributive property. Do we see distributive property on either side of that equal sign? Yes or no? Do we see distributive property anywhere? Y'all, just use your words. No, okay. No distributive property. And Ms. Reyes, what does distributive property look like? Like this. I may have 3x plus um, 7, right? This is distributive property because what am I going to do with the 3? I'm going to multiply it times both terms in the parentheses. This is called distributive property. And I don't see a pro, I don't see in my expression where that, that exists. Do you see that? So no distributive property. Two, combine like terms on each side of the equal sign separately. Let's look at this side. Is there anything to combine on this side? No. What about this side over here? Yes. When I combine that, what does that give me? Negative 10x. Excellent. So I'm going to bring this down. Negative 20 is equal to combine these like terms, and that gives me a negative 10x. Any questions about what I did there? Okay. So now, the next step is to move the variables to the same side. Do I have variables on both sides of this equal sign? No, I do not. Okay. Lastly, isolate the variable. That means get X by itself. Okay. So how do I get X by itself? What do I do to get rid of this negative 10? I divide both sides by a negative 10. Why do I divide both sides by a negative 10? Why am I using division? Very good, because it's the inverse operation of multiplication. The operation that's automatically between the negative 10 and X is multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is division. So I divide both sides by a negative 10. What's negative 20 divided by a negative 10? Positive 2. Bring down the equal. Okay. Negative 10 divided by a negative 10 is what? It's just 1. So somebody said X. Any questions about how I got that? I'm going to pause to give you a chance to write. Yes, baby, go ahead. Perfect. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. I'm going to pause to give you a chance to write. Some people are writing. See if you can do number two. I'm going to make number two similar to number one. Okay. So we have six is equal to one minus two n plus five. See if you can do that one. 
I'm going to pause for the calls. Let's see what we got. All right. What did y'all do first? We don't have distributive property, right? So we didn't do distributive property. Uh, what about combining like terms? Can we combine like terms? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. So what terms? Do we have anything that we can combine over here? No. no. But what about on this side? What can we combine? One, one and five. What's one plus five? Six. six. So we're going to bring down this six. We combine this with this. That gives us six. And we bring down the what? Negative two, Negative two in. Very good. Okay. Next is we're going to move the variables to the same side. But do we have variables on both sides of the equal sign? No. Okay. So now we're isolating the variable. What do we move first? This six. How do we move a positive six? We're going to subtract six on both sides. Okay. What is 6 minus 6? Zero. 0. Bring down the equal. This is 0 also, right? So what's left on this side? Negative 2. Negative 2n. We still got to isolate the variable, right? How do we isolate the variable? What are we going to do? Division. We're going to divide both sides by what? Negative, zero. negative 2. So we're going to divide by negative 2. What is zero divided by negative two? Zero. It is zero. Okay. And then negative two divided by negative two? A one. It's one. Negative two goes into negative two one time. So we're left with one in or just what? In. Raise your hand if you got that right. Okay. Just a couple people. All right. Where did we get messed up at? Out of curiosity. What we? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Anybody else? What about you, baby? Was you getting ready to say something? Uh huh. Uh, my stormer break died, so I'm gonna get zero. You saw zero, and was like, that happens a lot because we don't realize that um, zero divided by any number is gonna be zero. But if it's the other way around, like five divided by zero, that's undefined, not possible. Okay, All right, let's try another one. You got a question? You got your hand raised? You sure? Okay. Let's try this one, okay, y'all? 8x minus 2 is equal to a negative 9 plus 7x. Take your time. We have steps, okay? Just try. All right, let's try. Yep, you should have seen it. Oh, God, it was like 10 people looking at me like, ah. <laughs> God, don't. All right, here we go. First step is distributive property. Do y'all see distributive property anywhere in the problem? No, so skip step one. The second step, yes, baby. Okay, distributive property looks like this, okay? That's what, the, or sometimes they'll have the parentheses first. Um, n plus 8 and the number B, this is still distributive property. You got it? Okay, so you don't see, that's okay, baby. So you don't see that on either side. That's distributive property. So now, let's look at each side separately. Can I combine anything over there? No, can't combine those. They're not like terms, okay? Can I combine anything over here? No. You can't combine those because they are not like terms. So now we're going to move variables to the same side. Do I have variables on both sides of the equation? Yes. yes. So I need to move them so that they're on the same side. I practice always moving the smaller one so I don't have to really deal with negatives that much, okay? So which one? But you can choose something different. Does it matter? It doesn't as long as you do math right. Which one do you want to move? Do you want to move 8x over here or 7x over there? I would also. This is a positive 7x. How do I move positive 7x to the other side? Subtract it because the inverse of addition is subtraction. So let's subtract 7x. Whatever you do to one side of that equal sign, you have to do what? To the other side. Does everybody know why? 
or just you've accepted it? I don't know. I just accept it. You've accepted. Okay, so let me explain why. All right, so if I'm going to use um, Bubba and Shaquita, okay? So listen. Mm, Shaquita. All right, so if Bubba has, uh, they, they my kids, my baby kids. If Bubba has $10 and Shaquita has $10, okay, they're equal, right? You see the expressions are equal? It's equal. So if I take $2 away from Bubba, in order for them to be equal, what do I have to do with Shaquita? I have to take $2 away from Shaquita. These expressions, even though they don't look the same, they are equal. So if you take something from one side of the equal sign, you got to do the same thing to the other side or they're no longer equal. Any questions about what I said? That is why. That equal sign is there for a reason. This side is equal to negative 4x uh, minus 6x. This side is equal to that. This side is equal to negative 20. These expressions are equal to each other. Any questions? So whatever you do to one side, you always got to do to the other. Or it's no longer equal. It's not an equation anymore. Okay? All right. So let's continue. So on this side, I have, I have what? What's 8x minus 7x? X. 1x or just x. What's left over here? Negative 2. Bring down the what? Equal sign. Any questions about this side? No? Okay. Over here. What's left over here? Negative 9. Negative nine because this right here is what? It's a gone. It's zero. Any questions so far? Now we got to isolate the variable. How do we get X by itself? Adding 2. Adding two. Somebody said, is that you, Tan? Add 2 to both sides. So when we add 2 to both sides, this is 0, and I'm left with what over here? The x is equal to what over here? Negative 7. Somebody said it early. That's fine. Any questions? Okay, I'm going I'm to see how many people give me the death stare on this one. The evil, the evil eye. Boy, y'all should have seen your faces. I was like, dang. Which one, A? Yeah. Negative nine. This is a letter A, y'all. Your who? Poor Pinky. What'd you do to it? Oh, that's why. Yeah, it's probably going to hurt for another day. So A, A plus 5 equals negative 5A plus, plus 5. Um, a Q is, to me is like this. That's to me, that's a Q. This is a, that's okay. Uh, this is a A. Oh. No, you can't have it both ways, y'all. I mean, it's long enough. It's a, It looks like this. It's long. I'm telling you it's an A. They the same. So we do not have distributive property. Okay? We cannot combine anything over here. We can't combine this either. So we're going to move the variables to the same side. Which one do you want to move? Do you want to move 1A or negative 5A? I would move negative 5A. What's the opposite of that? Plus 5A. It is the smallest. A is smaller than negative. No, negative 5 is smaller. Negative 5 is smaller. All right. Yeah, negative 5 is smaller. All right, so we have 1A plus 5A. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, it's right there on the uh, on the wall. What's 1A plus 5A? 6A. Bring down the plus. This is gone. Oops. 
Subtract five. This is go. Divide by six. What did we say zero divided by six is? I, I have to. It's time to go. I just wanted to put that in the video.